Okay, welcome to this units three and four. If you have survived the first two units and this two, then the worst is over. We experience that just geometry is hard. We talk about the cross product and lines and planes today. I try to keep this short, so I prepared already the, the sections. I will do that in class, of course, in much more detail, but there are also some demonstrations which I want to show you here, which I cannot show at home. The cross product is a, another product for vectors, but unlike the dot product, which was a scalar, the cross product is a vector. And I give you the, the, the definition. The first entry is the second entry is, and finally, the last entry is, so that's the definition. It's a weird uh, product if you look at it first. So this is a, a possibility. You can also see this as a determinant, but you practice this a lot. This cross product will appear all the time. So first of all, what we have is this is anti-commutative. It's a weird thing, right? We, we, we usually have commutativity. V is perpendicular to V cross W. <coughs> the length of V cross W, <coughs> that's just the length of V, magnitude of W times sinus of the angle between them. <coughs> and that actually turns out to be just the area of a parallelogram. V, which is the base length, times the height, that's the area. Now, one of the nice things uh, of the of the, of the cross product is that it has a lots of applications. But first of all, what we have in, in math, just we have seen here, this is a nice way to get the area, area of triangles, for example, V cross W length divided by two. You actually get the sine formula. <coughs> in physics, the applications are everywhere. It's just amazing. If you have anything moving, uh, but if you have angular momentum, R cross V. <coughs> R is the vector here, and the V is, 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 the, is the velocity. So what we get, and that's also some property which we discuss here, it's a right-hand rule. So if this is V, this is W, this is V cross W. Angular momentum would, would point up. Take a, take a bicycle wheel, turning it around, you see the reaction is, is different than, than you would expect. Torque. This is R, and then I apply a force. That's the torque, the Lorentz force first. So you have a magnetic field. This is a, a magnetic field B, and you have some particles like electrons moving here, which is V. Which is v. What you get is a force. What we have is, is a battery, and then we have a magne magnetic field. And here I just close a loop. So what I'm doing is I'm building a current, and the electrons will move in that there will be a force perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the motion. I'm not sure, I'm never sure whether it works. It's, it's always kind of, but you see it works. So this is a, the simplest motor. What happens is you have to feel the force. You can train your real wrist, make, make your wrist strong. Another nice application of both the dot product and cross product is the triple scalar product. This is a signed volume of three vectors. This is the first vector, the second vector, and then the third vector. So this is equal to the length of u times the length of v cross w times the cosine of the angle. So u times cosine alpha, that's actually just h. That's the height of the parallel epipede. So the height times the base area is the volume of the parallel epipede. To the very end, I want to say something about the history. Hamilton was searching for a triplets, how he called it, and he was unable to do that for many, many years. And then he realized, suddenly he had the inspiration, it's not three, it's four vectors called these quaternions. And then he found a multiplication which works. So it is I squared is equal to J squared. That he wrote down on a bridge is equal to i j k is equal to minus one. The magic relations. When you take the product and multiply it out, you see the dot product appearing here. And here you have the cross product, hybrid of a dot product and cross product. So in some sense, Hamilton was in 1843 introducing both the dot product and cross product. So that's unit three. Unit four is also uh, still quite a bit of geometry and not an easy topic. 
So first of all, we look at the equation of a plane, or how do we represent a plane? And there are two ways. If you know the normal vector, which we often also call n, we can characterize a point on the plane in the property that x minus x0 times n is 0. And we can also write it as just, just as ax plus by plus cz is equal to d, <coughs> where d is what you obtain when you plug in the point. There is another way how we can describe planes, and that's with parameterizations. So you have a plane, and we have two vectors in it, and there is a parameterization. <coughs> now for lines, we don't have just a, an equation, we would, so we take r is equal to x0 plus v times t. We have only one, one parameter. Parameterization of a plane has two parameters, r, s, and t. Parameterization of a line has one, one parameter. And then we will practice all this in the context of distance formulas, distance between point and line, distance between point and plane, distance between line and line. Everything comes together. We need the dot product, cross product, we need lines and planes. So essentially this summarizes all the first week topics. But how do you derive the formula for the distance between a point and the, and the line? What you can look at is, is this triangle here, and uh, this is PQ. But then there's a little trick, and we just multiply it with V, and we divide by V. And the reason why we do that is then we can just write it as PQ cross V over V. And we don't need any angles or trigonometry for that. In this case, it's very similar. We can just project, vector project PQ onto N. So the distance is actually just a vector projection PQ times N over N. This is the distance formula between a point and, uh, and a plane. And finally here, also the same, same, same applies here. So if you have a vector V here and a vector W here, you have V cross W is N, two lines like that. And in order, the, the shortest connection between them is, has to be perpendicular to both. If it would not be perpendicular, you could make it shorter. And so what you do is you just project this PQ onto that N. And also this has a geometric interpretation, as you see. This is a volume of a parallel epiped, as you have seen here, and divide by N, which is the length of that, which is the area. So it's the height of the parallelity bit. So that's a summary of uh, uh, unit three and unit four.